this is John Paul Brower. Today we're going to talk about my animation workflow in Quill. So a little bit about myself. I have been animating since 98. I worked for a CD-ROM company doing a lot of like uh, Fisher Price animations. Went from there to Nickelodeon in New York City to work on like uh, little kids shows like Little Bill and Wonder Pets. Then I spent about 10 years doing Lego animations in Maya. And then that company got acquired by an Atwater Studios. And I'm still working for them. But when there's downtime, I do a lot of quill work. I've done some commercial quill work. And that's sort of my history. I, um, I always, with the Maya pipeline working in there, I, I wasn't, I couldn't do everything. So now when I got found Quill, I just found that I could really, I could do some of everything, everything. you know, you know, yeah, I could just, <laughs> I could have an idea, you know, my, my kid could say some crazy thing and I'll be like, okay, I can make that like the chicken animation. If you're familiar with that, that was just like my kid's idea of something silly with a giant egg. So I was like, okay, I'll do that. And you know, you can do something like a 15 second animation in a couple weeks or less. If you're, I mean, depends how complicated it is. So anyway, what I wanted to do today is I wrote myself some notes and I brought them into Quill here, but I just want to, I'm going to use this one to show you how I organize things just because it's one of my more recent ones. And I saved different stages of how I worked on it so that I could show people how I, I, how it's organized in my brain really. And then and that probably won't take the whole time. And then I figure I'd go into some of the other ones. Like I know the, the uh, avocado killer animation I did might go into there and talk that through. That one is definitely not well organized. It was like before I started to get things going on. But so let me, I'll start off here. I'll start where with these, I'll play it through once. Let me turn off my notes. There's no sound right now, so it's just going to be the. All right, and that's it. That's just so cool. Short and simple. If you guys haven't checked it out yet in VR, you know, um, the link to his VR post is in the event invite. So um, check it out for sure if you haven't. Okay. Awesome. So it all started with that doodle up there. So I just mm -hmm, get that out. I bring them in. I do my thumbnails, which is only I can really, it's like my own language. It's not that it's complicated. <laughs> it's, not, it's just something. So I have some kind of plan coming in. So I like, yeah. I think, what do I need? What do I need these characters to be able to do? So I, Ready. So I just, and then I'll just start making them. So let's turn on, I call that character the, the sucky bug. <laughs> so. <laughs> so for the, for the um, sketches and notes, you just take a picture with your phone and bring the image in or? Yeah. yeah. What's, yeah. I do that all the time. I take pictures of like That's a good idea. handwritten notes because it's so, it's, it can be a little tricky to write in Quill. So I just. I'll write down everything in a notebook, doodles. I'll bring them on, just take a picture with my phone, bring them in. Sometimes I'll do actual like, uh, like a model sheet almost drawn, then come in and like mm. move the model to it. Um, so yeah, so I, for every character, like I started with this one bug, those two came later, but they are essentially the same animation, all just retimed and a little bit of color recoloring. So I keep, one version of that character, just one clean file that I can always go back to and I can grab stuff out of here. Hmm. So that's the still one, although there is the drinking cycle in there, I think. No, it's not. All right. There's one loop of the drinking thing. So I started with the cycle of the drinking loop. So I got abdomen, let's say, 
I broke it up into sections like a bug. Got the thorax, got the head. Now there is, there is a little squash on each little section, but it really turned out not to be necessary. So it's all position keyframe on each of these body parts, kind of going in and out like that. That's then, interesting. So you, you mix the transition with uh, the transform keys, you mix it with the... Yeah, that's... With pretty, the frame piece. Pretty much every time, that's what I do. I, I'll do... I'll use, like, the transform keys for the big... the big moves, and then I'll go in with the uh, keyframe for... which, you know, I mean, some of my files get pretty big, which is a kind of a consequence of that. <laughs> so... So yeah, for those, there's a little squash on each of those. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention is I work at 24 frames a second. Generally on twos, that's just sort of like a habit from way back when I was doing CD-ROM drawn animation. But I do sometimes yeah, I use those in-between frames. Like if there's something really fast happening, sometimes you, you kind of need those frames to make it read, I find. So I, I will... Yeah on occasion. So yeah, I made this cycle. Where's the, all right, there's the nose. So I just have, I have the frame by frame animation of that nose that cycles through. The legs just match to the body. So at first I did each body part and then I match the legs to that. So I started with that on, for the character. And then each of them has the same cycle, just I offset it a little. I duplicated it, and then I, you know, pulled the, oops, not like that. I did that, and then I moved it over. So that, they're all a little different. I think I just broke it. Um, so where are we? So you basically you trim the animation and then you push it back so they all set in time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, yeah. I trim it, shift it over. That way they're not all identical. Um, for the other two characters, all I did to make them a little different at the end, once I was done, is I just selected everything in that layer and I did a little color adjustment or I made the size a little smaller. And I had also offset the animation a little bit. All right, so the drinking loop, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then let's go to the next one. Sick bug. That's a pretty, uh, that's a very interesting uh, system that you use. I, I really like it. Do you, do you, do you use like the feature for auto select that recently kind of came up in, in, um, the, uh, in the update? Not that often. <laughs> I find I mm. I use the um, the manipulator a lot, and mm -hmm. then you know one way I need to try and like really use it sometime. But I, I going back and forth between the windows to make it rotate or translate would it, I um I, I felt like it slowed me down a little. Not that I'm working terribly fast. I really should just get used to it. But um. It would be neat if you could assign, like I'm, I have another animation where I have a, which I think I've seen you do, Gora, where you have a group that's just for translate, one that's just for rotate. It would be neat if there was yeah. a way to assign that. Yeah, so um, the way I work now, and that was like the previous way I was working on, the way I work now is the, with the transform constraints, right? Like I usually define the pivot point and I... Um, mostly work with rotation only because it behaves like a joint, you know, mm -hmm. um, of course it depends on what you animate, but, um, I figured that, um, the auto select and, and by constraining the translate, you don't have to go back and forth um, between the windows anymore because you can just use it like a stop motion puppet. Uh, so I think yeah. it would work with, um, your rig that you have already like really well, but the, the most important thing is that you predefine the, um, pivot points where you want the, for example, the, the, the little 
trunk of the bug to rotate from. For example, if you wanted to rotate from the base of the nose, right? Yeah. Then you you p would put the pivot there, and then you just auto select and constrain the translate translation, and then you will be able to rotate it and even puppeteer it that way, right? So yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. now, but there's multiple ways to do things. So right, right. So if you had that set to translate, and then you went to a new layer. You that you wanted to just rotate, or no, sorry, the other way around. <laughs> if you wanted that one to translate, you would have to switch it, right? You'd have to switch, go over the other window, and so um, if you want to switch between translate and rotation, you would have. If you go to the transform panel, very quick at the bottom. Yeah. So there you see the checkboxes, right? Yeah. If you so you would have to switch that but that back and forth. So right, because right. that one is universal. So you know when you translate, you have to have translate open. And mm -hmm. if you only want to rotate, then you have to uncheck translate. So that that's the manual switch you would have to do. But right. um yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so so yes, I should get used to it more. I have played with it. I just haven't really um adopted it so oh, i went too far i missed one so so i actually want to turn off that guy right now so we can see Swampy. all right and i'm going to turn off the animated background there we go so i just want you to see when i made this guy run away it's just transform keys on the entire group. So if we look at him, where is he? In here, this group here, I go in and I just frame by framed it without any of the secondary animation at all. And I use that as my guide, cause just so I know like about how long it's going to take. So I, I sort of get my general timing for the whole shot with the group, with the transform animation. And then... So basically you're animating frame by frame with transform keyframes, right? Yeah, so I work just, with the steps. Yeah. There are yeah. times yeah. when I'll, um, I will do a, you know, a, a curve. Interpolation. Interpolation. Yeah. And then I'll go back in and I'll keyframe in, which I... I think I saw you do Daniel in one of your streams where you you can like yeah step it. You can yeah. switch, in between. switch to linear and then and then add keyframes and then switch back to step. Yeah, you do yeah, that. Yeah, I find I have to adjust it a lot because you can't. It's not like you can go into the curves and fine tune them. You know, yeah, <laughs> so you gotta. No, no, it's no. not straightforward, but. I mean, I just, I like the two on twos kind of look personally. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. Kind of. And it, and, it, and, it, and it, much, it, it marries better with the frame by frame animation. So it does no like discrepancy between something is too smooth versus the, the frame by frame that goes at 24 frame per second. That's yeah. really awesome. So now this is the full. So that's with all the secondary and that's, I made him run further than I actually ended up using. So. And the secondary, you would do frame by frame. Yeah, as frame by frame. frame, by frame keyframes. I did the each section of the body. I think I did the nose first, actually. No, I did the body sections, then the nose, then I matched the legs and then moved the drop shadow along. So he just he's drinking, and the uh, the drop shadow is transform keys. I'm, yep. I'm assuming, right? Uh, no, actually, it may not be. So it's the same. It's duplicated geometry as well. It it might be frame by frame. Uh, kind of forgot about that. And to easily find it, you can go to um your selection tool and uh, go to select and all. Oh, uh, right. select in all frames, and then you just select the shadow, and it will jump to that right away. Yeah, yeah. There you, and then you can scroll until yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, so it's frame by frame. frame, frame yeah, because yeah, I had to like get really, over uh, all this lumpy stuff. Oh yeah, you needed to deform a little bit. Yeah, that's really yeah, that makes sense. 
I really like your approach. It's like really like just pure traditional animation. It's just right there. <laughs> it's, yeah, I don't have a ton really... of tricks. <laughs> Which no, I but that's the thing. That's the but trick. That's yeah. the, <laughs> the, tri the trick is just to apply your traditional animation skill. That's the, you don't need any more tricks. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Yeah, it was very, because like I don't, I kind of just grind through it. I, I, <laughs> I think about it the same way I've thought about everything I've animated ever. I think, you know, it just, it's how you get there. And there's a, Maya, there was a lot in my way as far as like from start to finish. And I found this yeah. sort of really liberating to be able to do this whole thing. Yeah, I totally agree. I feel like, you know, as like, especially if you're new to animation and stuff, you tend to like rely on interpolation and stuff too much. You know, like yeah. when I first started Maya, I was like, oh, I have to use the interpolations and stuff like that. But by the end, when I finished college, I was basically almost animating frame by frame in Maya as well. You know, at least every fourth um, frame had a keyframe in it, you know, and then I would just try to control the animation instead of Maya controlling my animation. Yeah. You know? So um, I felt like, you know, like the more you control consciously, the better and more personality your animation um, will become. And of course, if you know the craft, you can use the curves to your advantage. Oh, yeah. But um, when I started off, like I thought like, oh, it's better to have less keys, but that's not actually the way it's not really true, right? Because yeah. if you just let the computer decide, then it looks like super spliny and gross. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. No, I agree totally. So it's now that's cool when you get, that's when he gets eaten. So I'll go into the other guy now. So the swampy. Guy. I have a question. I'm sorry. What's I have a question that? for you. I have a question for you. Do you do any planning for your spacing? Like, do you like plan ahead? Like, oh, I'm going to favor this uh, drawing or this pose or, or you just go with it like a more like a straight ahead kind of approach. It's, I might have some doodles of some poses, but generally I kind of go ahead. I will. I mean, it's not straightforward. I will do some posing. Yeah. I'll have like certain things I want to hit. Um, Let's see for this guy if they really. I knew I wanted to get like a. Oh, he's dead already. That's right. That's the one where he got eaten early. Let's see. No, not that one. I mean, I knew I wanted them hop up, but I kind of posed that out more as I went. Meaning, meaning that you you started with the keyframe. You started with yeah. the with the down position, and then with the with the high, and then yeah, and then the next one the text the floor, and then you you added the in betweens afterwards. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. awesome. So then the other thing, the big swamp monster, and once again, that's just the still. I keep that copy of just the raw thing with no animation before I potentially mess it up. And then once again, I just did the head with transform mm -hmm. keys. So oh, that's, fun. that's how I time it out. That's really good. Yeah. And then. Uh, you're adding all the fancy stuff. Afterwards. All the fancy stuff. Like this, oh, these might actually be, some of these I had trouble getting to be stepped. Yeah. Like when something really subtle oh. and smooth like that, yeah. I couldn't get it you to have work, to. right? Yeah, totally. So like, that's that's when I use um transform keyprints. So if something's move it has to move smoothly, like for example, a ship up and down movement or something. Yeah. That's a nightmare if you do that if you have yeah. curves. It was just yeah. too mm -hmm. difficult to do without. So I just mm -hmm. I, I use that. Also, I thought like um, it never inter really interferes with the frame by frame. Actually, like for example, if you have a car like in Sorain and like Quantum Rays, when it's like moving up and down smoothly, but the characters are animated on twos, it doesn't yeah. really bother me at all. You know, it's just it's actually more soothing for the eyes because if yeah. you have an up and down movement and you have a frame by frame, it's game over, right? Then yeah, stutters yeah. so much. Yeah. yeah, it gets too hard to watch. Like I did something flying one time and I had step keys and that got a little, 
That was a little hard on the yeah. eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you have to follow with your head something. Yeah. That's uh, it's kind of a similar thing with um, with uh, in, in 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 regular animation. If you have a camera move mm. following an object that's moving really fast, yeah. you don't want that object to ever have any staggering or something. You want the camera and the object to be really in synchrony with each other, right? Yeah, I ran into that. I think with that last one with the blueberry. I mm. think it was step the animation on the blueberry and the camera was was linear and it just super smooth. Yeah. <laughs> it was horrible to look at. <laughs> so I think I yeah. ended up putting it to transform keys. So yeah, basically <laughs> this is his movement is pretty smooth, but then like the cattails and the grass, mm. those are all frame by frame. Nice. And then something for the blink I wanted to people might find helpful. Let's see. There's the lids. Mm. So I would, this is finished, so it's not here, but I would generally have a layer. Let's see if I have this here. I made this thing over here. It's very silly, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I will, um, mm -hmm. I'll make a layer that I can just copy from. Like, so there I have all, I've never done lip sync and quill, but I just, I have all the mouths and the blink there. <laughs> so if I was nice. to say I wanted to make a blink later down the line here, I would probably, I would just make an empty frame, make some empty frames, pull this over, let me move it down so it's easier. And I would just like select, oops, I gotta select all on. Select, paste it in, go here. That way I just have a resource to pull from. Oh, just for timing or? Just so I can just, rather than pull from, like say if I just only had this one layer with the blinks on it, yeah. I would have to go mm -hmm. all the way back to the beginning to like find the keys, copy, paste to here. So I like mm -hmm. to have it on a separate layer so I can just, I can pull it anywhere and copy it down in. I mean, you could mm -hmm. merge it, I guess. I always had trouble merging layers. Okay, so, so there's just a little trick that might help you if you have one blink. Mm -hmm. That's where um, the spans become really, really powerful oh, right. because you, you can reuse one blink multiple times in the same layer oh, at sa man. different timings. So uh, I can show it to you right now if you go to the actual blink of the um, guy. Okay. This so, one. so I don't know. Is that the, this one? This one here, I think, yeah. Yeah, okay, so you can close the span like at the end, for example. Like, so if you go to the end of the link, okay. yeah, and then close it with a bracket, yeah, and go further down in the timeline, let's say to 12 seconds or something, yeah, or 11, and then reopen the span. Oh my god, boom, <laughs> boom, there you go. And now, yeah. now you can close that span again, and then you can, you can also individually slide them around, right? So you can close really? it and then you can grab it in the timeline and then grab and yeah, oh my god, that way you can time out the blink. <laughs> he just changed my mind. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> all right, all right, so maybe for lip sync, would I still? My you can app. do this technique as well. Like um, that's the that's how I actually did the lip sync for my working from home piece where the digital character is talking. Okay. I had all the um, shapes ready mm -hmm. and I spanned them out. So whenever I needed an O, I would like close the F span and open an O span, close the O span, open oh, an A wow. span and stuff like that. So Jeez. that's another way to do things. Okay. Because then you can reuse stuff without having multiple layers or without having to copy paste. Right? Oh, that's so funny. I just learned something. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Yeah. And Big, yeah, Dave is asking, only... Big Dave is asking yep. a related question. Can you then edit the span and the instant spans update? Yeah, so a span is basically just like a reference. So if you change something 
in the span it changes for all spans so yes mm. uh, so it would update yeah i was gonna say that, that these uh, you have to bear in mind that these are not copies that you can uh, modify uh, yeah if you modify one of the copies it will affect all the other copies because okay. it's in it's in the, it's in the same uh, layer if you want a copy that is a little different you have to make a new layer yeah. so right. but no, uh, yeah. it's a cool trick that is a cool trick. Yeah, so I think like if I had specific lip, lip sync where I'd have the shapes I could start with, you still want to do in between sometimes or holds. And so I haven't done it yet in here, but I want to. I want to see it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> yeah. I will. I will. That's next. Um, all right. Where yeah. should I? So. Oh, the rings. I used the same animation for all those rings there in the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when all the drips fall off his, his face there. Yeah, that's super So I just tried to, keep, <laughs> tried to use as much as I could. And then secondary on the uh, those little lip flap things. I don't know, the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so that's basically how I organize everything in all my scenes. They used to be, I mean, I was a lot less organized on my earlier stuff, but I do have, I have some exa examples of simply just frame by frame that I wanted to go show you guys as well. But let me, yeah, this see. is, <clears throat> This is a good example of how to organize uh, the folders, and then I, lo I love that you did the the main animation on the on the on the on the main folder, and then and then you added more secondary animation on under that. Just uh, keep it really organized, really. It works easy to to change later. You know, if you want to manipulate or change something, it's easier now. Yeah, yeah. So then the water. This was something I really, I'm not sure if I did this the easiest or best way, but <clears throat> so you see there's motion on there, but there are props because it, it would get really heavy and get, as I was trying to animate the water. And then the reflection is just, I made a flat version of him and animated him. <laughs> which <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's I'm sure awesome. there's a better way, but. Well, I mean, the inefficient way is to just duplicate and um, mirror, but then I think you will get to the draw code limit because you have a lot of folders. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think, think the way you did it is probably the right way. Because yeah. I, watched... I did not notice <laughs> that it's flat. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, I watched um, um, someone did that animation where the girl is in the water at a bus stop. Uh, oh, gosh. And it's like night. But anyway, she had she was standing in the water and she had like the duplicated thing, but then there was some solid stuff on the surface. And I couldn't think of a way to make that work for this with the memory and all the other things. So yeah, yeah, I, just, I think it would be super tricky in this case, right? Because you have yeah. um a lot of layers and stuff like that, and when you duplicate, then you double the amount, right? right. So mm. it's it's super interesting. I've never tried it like this, but that's that's cool. Like it it totally works. Oh, good, good. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, I just recreated the set and everything in there. And then I sort of just <laughs> grabbed with a, and it, that's the only part I used the animation brush for, or the, no, I didn't use the animation brush. Sorry. I grabbed that's it over time and just manipulated the water. So there was. That's so cool. Up. Yeah, so that's can we actually, can you go underwater and show us what the layer looks like if you go under the ground? Like that? <laughs> So it's just a lot of strokes of paint. And there's this janky old neck. <laughs> That's fine. And so the reflection? the reflection? Um where's the reflection? It'll show. No, the reflection is flat, Goro. The reflection is, is oh, not it's the way flat you do it. On the surface? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, oh it's not the way you, you do it. Yeah. Oh now yeah. I get it. Okay, See? you painted it flat on the surface. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's amazing! <laughs> it's a lot. That's a lot of work, man. <laughs> it was hard. Well, you you probably you probably only have to do it once, and then it's pretty forgiving because it's a reflection, right? You can just yeah. grab tool and move it. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's awesome. my sort of system, and it's been working for me so far. But <laughs> I wanted to go into, I know people like the, um, what, what time are we at? Oh, yeah. We're half an hour in. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to take a look at the avocado one really quick. Let's do it. All right. Uh, hold on. Before before you open, and um, there's a question from oh, sure. Joan, Joan, who says, could you show us your draw calls? <laughs> <That's> oh. very... <laughs> well, this one isn't Yeah, if you go to the performance. Okay. This one is It's not yet optimized? No, this is the one before I got it ready for... Because it's still... But it peaks... My... It looks like it peaks at 57, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, still that's fine. Good. Yeah, the draw calls aren't bad. The poly yeah, count. I'm kind of doing, yeah. this, doing oh. my quill class right now, and I'm kind of just doing busy work in Valheim. But I think you, uh, Eugene and Andrew are also in Valheim. The what? Oh. <laughs> I, I, think, think, I don't think he's talking to okay. us. Yeah, I, think. <clears throat> I think he's talking about something else, this guy. Oh. Yeah, I, got <laughs> it. I think he was on the phone. <laughs> we muted him. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, so it wasn't. I've been trying, I've done a lot of these. I don't know if you guys remember the, the thing that rips open the tree, the Mandillo thing. Yeah. <laughs> that thing I cannot get to the right size. Cause my whole goal with that one was to make a model that I didn't compromise on at all. <laughs> and I just went like as detailed as I could. And it's like, it's, I think uh, that one is also older, right? It's like before yeah. Quill Theater came out mm -hmm. where, yeah, like if yeah. I look at my old files, oh Jesus, you know, like it has like, <laughs> yeah. like seven million polygons and stuff like that. You know? yeah. yeah, tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I was trying to see if I could get that one. All right, so here's this guy. Oh, Same yeah, deal. Okay. I bring in my drawings. Um, so I think it's a good good um, point to ask the question by, let me see who asked the question, uh, Diana. Diana asks, um, John, um, where do you uh, get your inspiration from and how do you come up with your ideas? Oh, all right. So this one, someone was talking about how they paid like eight dollars for toast <laughs> for avocado toast and i was like wow really <laughs> welcome to california <laughs> <laughs> so then you know then i went from there i had recently been, you know people were doing those like fighting loops they were doing yeah. that just keep they're really good and they just kept looping and i was like oh could i do that and then i was thinking about this avocado thing so i was going to have you can see there's bread there and there's the avocado. I was going to have them, this whole like cycle of a fight, which that's a hipster, right? Yeah, that's a hipster. Yeah. The original file, the original file is actually called hipster. <laughs> and he has like, I figured what kind of knife would a hipster have? He'd have like a custom Japanese Santoku of knife, course. you know, and actually, mm -hmm. I don't know if that says it right. Goro, but it's supposed to say avocado, avocado or kira. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. Uh, the, the bottom, the last one needs to be vertical though. The, the last row. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I Googled it and then I tried my best. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was a lot of the, that the <coughs> swampy one was just, a, you know, a lot of them come from the weekly prompts. Um, the chicken one was my kid's idea. What are some of the other ones? I mean, but this is the cool thing about, you know, storytelling, right? Like you really thought about those things, you know, like if you watch it, you might not get all of it, but you know, and like you, you feel it all right. The story that you had behind it, like now you give context, it makes it even funnier, you know? <laughs> and um, yeah, it's, it's always cool to, you know, always pull from real life experiences and stuff and always try to add some background to it. Like, I like that it wasn't, like just a sword or just a knife there was a reason behind it right and i feel like those are those things that are important in storytelling super cool <laughs> thanks yeah. yeah this guy he actually looks like a guy i uh he's since shaved but one of my coworkers kind of looks like this guy <laughs> so that was fun too <laughs> <laughs> 
it's, it'll turn off my. So your your models are very your models are always very like a sculptural, and I noticed that you paint a lot of the the shadows and stuff. It look make it look more very sure. painterly. Uh, do you have a background in in, in painting and? I went to school for and illustration and, uh, and a school of visual arts in New York City. I went to school for illustration. I mean, I, I, and I ended up going, I was always cartoony, but then I sort of got pushed into a non-cartoony place where I, I didn't really excel at. So, and mm. then I ended up in animation again. So really, I should have been cartoony the whole time. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> But um, I, I'm like, hopefully I pull some of that of that from my past and I'm able to use it. But I, I really look at like, there's a lot of really good painters in this quill group. I mean, Goro and all those, all you guys are really good at painting. So I try to see what you guys are doing and work with that. <laughs> um, so this guy's, I also, I won't turn him on. Let's but, play it back first. Let's play it back first. Oh, sorry. Yes, not, of course. Not everyone has seen it. Let me turn off that. Where should we go? I don't know. <laughs> I love the resistance at the end when he pulls the sword. Yeah. <laughs> so a little detail. I love that the whole <laughs> the whole avocado gets chopped in half, but he only cuts to the half of it. <laughs> yeah, this half is still alive. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. So he's still alive like this, there. The, the... And then he's dead. <laughs> when you pull out his brain, he dies. That's funny. So that's another. When I animate, I think I try and like almost like your kid playing with toys kind of thing. Like mm. in my head, I'm thinking, Shh, sunk. You know, and, yeah. and like even sometimes when I work on it with directors, they'll give me notes like that. And they'll just be like, you know, like, whoop, you know, and you're oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. I know what yeah. you're saying. So I yeah. kind of always think like that. And then with the, the avocado seed, I really wanted him to just stop as soon as he got impact with that seed. And then the guy yeah. just hangs there. The limbs <laughs> go forward. And half fall so off. did you do um did you do a sketch pass for this before animating the the full painted models did you no. do like a like a really rough version of it first i didn't actually no i just i had those doodles oh. and then i <laughs> and then that's it <laughs> that's it yeah and then i i mean i pose things out i mean i'm not even sure i had i knew i was going to do this exactly when i started I think I had mm -hmm. grand plans of doing the whole bread, avocado, toast <laughs> thing. And then I pared it down <laughs> to something I could handle. And this is all frame by frame, right? This yeah, can you show us the... So, you got the avocado. This is oh, the avocado okay. that gets cut mm -hmm. in half. Mm -hmm. So that's when he stops. Okay, and then each, I have each one is a half has group animation also. Mm -hmm. So, so it's pretty much the same as the uh, the previous shot I went through, where I do the main stuff with the groups, and then mm -hmm. I have frame by frame okay. inside. So there's mm -hmm. your legs. So that way you don't always have to like you can have like general movement, but you don't have to add frame by frame to all of them, right? So you can just. Yeah have hold frames and then add frames where you mm -hmm. need it right so it seems yeah. like that's your way to go to combine the two models yeah it 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 doesn't it's easier for me mentally i mean it's a strange thing to say but it's like it helps me wrap yeah, my head around I, everything i actually work in a very similar way on my stuff um, more and more like i just think like i use frame by frame less for transform keyframes only for specific movements right um mm -hmm. The transform keyframes I usually use for like general movements, but if you see my latest stuff, it has a lot of subtle movement, like the robot on the beach, you know, in the marsh. Oh, yeah. And that stuff is impossible. Like you don't want to do that with frame by frame. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's something I just do through rotations and stuff. But yeah. combining the two models is super powerful for sure. Yeah. 
it definitely it i think it's going to be i do have one example where i didn't do any of this at all but that was a situation where that blade the one where it's the ink night where it's all like rigid body there's there's no um i didn't manipulate the geometry or i didn't use any groups at all on that it's all just frame by frame because it was so simple i knew i wasn't going to have to do expressions or bend anything yeah so um all right so this guy so yeah i made the two halves for i have a running cycle which isn't set up correctly this is before i figured out cycles <laughs> i think i actually <laughs> copied things let's see i do this yeah see i actually copied each layer so i got two layers of running which this one was also one that was really big i remember when you wanted me to get this ready for cool theater goro and it was a challenge for me that was yeah it was like high poly count i guess right yeah yeah I'm not yeah. sure if i can follow what you mean with um you duplicated the folders I like i think i for the run i think i got let's see oh you have two oh, different, yeah, yeah. yeah oh i see what you mean so you yeah, have one two, yeah. running and one character jumping no, this is just no, the, avocado. For the avocado running. I have oh, I see. running. So there's this. Oh, layer. Yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Instead of looking, you just duplicated and connected yeah. it. I see. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Or I just I hadn't figured anything out at that point, I guess. <laughs> I mean, how long ago was this? I don't even know. I this is pretty old, right? Yeah. This is not, yeah. It's really cool, though. I like oh, it. Thanks. So that's. And then as far as the animation, I just try to push hang time, um, little details. Like I didn't think of a leaf until the end. I mean, mm. I think I tacked that on. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, we can float to the ground. I had little secondary details that helped. I really wanted his jump and I wanted some hang time there. So you read that and then just mm. pass down into that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I guess that's it about this one, really. Unless anyone has any questions about this one in particular. So, so far, we don't have um, any questions okay. here. Yeah. Do okay. you? Uh, I have, um, do you use like some sort of system to avoid? Because you know, when you grab tool a lot, uh, the you do frame by frame, and you're grab tooling a lot, and the 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 model tends to break oh, yeah. when you do so many grab tooling. Do you do any system to kind of like, oh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a copy of this just in case I, I break it too much or something? Yeah, yeah. I, I will have like a separate layer that has the original geometry. And then every yeah. so often, I think especially on this guy, if I'm remembering correctly, the arms would get really messed up because there's like a, I put the plaid mm -hmm. along the outside of all that geometry. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would have to go back to an original arm and then go back in again and put it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely will. I'll, every so often when things get too crazy, I'll, I'll sort of reset. I'll be like, okay, here's a good point where I can get the original geometry back and yeah, back in here. And you put down a separate layer or in the same layer you're animating? Separate layer. I used to put yeah. it in the same layer, but and it just got too complicated for me. I, I ended up just mm -hmm. putting it on its own, so I never would ruin it. So Big Dave has a question. Um, he's asking, was the dude with a knife set up with some key poses first and then tweened? Yeah, yeah. I would do... Uh, it's basically pose-to-pose -pose animation, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, clearly I started there, but then I went... It goes down into this position, this anticipation. So I went there, and then I think I I knew my goal was to get to here. Mm -hmm. And then I, I worked in between those two to get that spinny sort of thing going. 
So do you have, um, obviously, I'm, I'm guessing that you have like a rough pass where you have the key poses and then you start adding oh, yeah. slowly the breakdowns and stuff, right? So the first pass is basically rough timing with stepped curves, but it's going to be stepped because it's frame by frame anyway. But um, yeah, that you have the main key poses first, then the breakdowns and then the in-betweens, right? Yep. Yep, exactly. Like more and more, I would go, I would break it down to the big poses. I probably started... The original pose, let's see, where he squats down. I may have had one of these stretch poses in between, but I probably went right to here, and then I was there. I probably had, like, four poses that I started with, and then I went in slowly, gradually added and added. And did you do thumbnails in 2D as well? I noticed you had like the sketch first, uh, the PNG layer uh, visible at the beginning, but did you have like a 2D no. sketch first? No, just like this now. That's all I had really. Okay. And then, oh, as far as like colors, and I go through, I get so much reference off of, you know, Pinterest and Google or whatever, and I'll, I'll bring that all yeah. in here for my palettes and, to try and figure out color because color is definitely not something I can do on instinct. I need, I need to have things to look at. It's not something I comes naturally, but oh. um, yeah, I bring lots of reference in here. Yeah. I love, I love seeing your real drawings and real notes in there. That's super <laughs> cool. Yeah. It's generally most of my stuff starts off as some kind of like wiggly doodle. And I, I'll bring it in and use it for reference. Um, I could go into the the night one, the blade one, real quick. Show you one that. Let's yeah. Do it. This one has. Yeah. I love this combination of like the traditional, uh, you know, uh, doodling oh, yeah, and uh, sketch pad, and then bringing that into Quill. That's that's a really cool system. Oh, I know. It's one of my favorites of yours, man. This oh. looks so crazy inked. It's Thank amazing. You. Yeah. So this yeah. Is, this was a lot of fun. So this one, it's much simpler than everything else, you know, which was nice. This was, this was a lot of fun to do. So basically all I have is frame by frame. I got the knight, they got the sword, and I got the drop shadow. And there is mm -hmm. one, it's all on twos. And there's one example of when I used my uh, in between frames. Because I, I have the sword on ones right there, just because it was something looked weird. Mm -hmm. so I had it mm -hmm. in there. So, yeah, this one I just, you know, everything was straight so up simple. frame by frame. Right? Yeah, everything is so like, it's just one piece of geometry. Well, you got all these. I lost a lot of the my like hatch marks or negative hatch marks, whatever it is. How, how did you yeah. do those actually? Like the the horizontal lines. Like how are they made? They are. Oh, just lines. Just white lines. Mm -hmm. Erased to the edge, and then I actually put black back over the that one part. So I did a, an ink drawing. I did an actual ink drawing in my notebook, which I didn't bring in here. I should have thought of that. It might be in the other version. So. It's it's cool because it looks much more complex than it is actually. Like I was wondering, like I, I thought like looking at it, I was like, man, you must have had like a lot of lines in here, but it seems like it's pretty lightweight, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is in here. Where is it? It says there's a PNG, but I can't find it. So for this one, the approach is less moving the groups and more about uh, animating frame by frame. Yeah, yeah. Without the trans without transform keys. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what would you say is the benefit of doing this system versus the other one? I think the other one you can get more complex with your character, whereas mm -hmm. this one, if he had expression changes and everything. You, it would be so hard to do. Like, say I, I first yeah. I, I did all this movement and then I had to go into each frame and somehow get a face on there that, like, I, one exactly. time, it's not out yet, but <laughs> when we talk about Namu someday, I'll be able to show you that it can get really difficult when it's all frame by frame like this. 
it's, it's very heavy yeah yeah and it, I, mean, I think you have white walls on i think that's why you don't see the png oh you're right <laughs> oh no and the white walls is actually hidden though but i don't know maybe i was wrong but there's some math i think the, 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 the jpeg is hidden right i don't know i turned it on man uh, oh i don't know well basically it, it looks just like this yeah guy. no it's really cool yeah you can just try turn on all the layers and see <laughs> on the very top it's just just yeah what you can do is yeah, this yeah and turn then turn it on and oh, there should be air somewhere those are your backup geometry oh, there he is. <laughs> so that's oh, all it was there you go. I, <laughs> uh, I like that you see the phone shadow on there <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. just for me Usually, yeah. <laughs> so that, that's like a different approach to get to get some animation done. You know, it came out pretty good. I was happy with this one as far as. Yeah, I really like the weight in this one too. Like it really shows um, your craft and animation, right? This one is like one of those tests tests yeah. that you do in school. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, show show weight. <laughs> one of the things yeah. Yeah. Um, really awesome and I, I lo and I love the way you did the, the shadow too it's the, with the lines um, it okay. really feels like a like an ink drawing and it's moving it's really really, really yeah, clever. try doing something again with this sort of style yeah I love the hand-drawn shadow as well right like yeah. it's imperfect the 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 um, hatch marks there so it's, it's like really it just looks well it is hand drawn but it yeah. just you know this is such a style that's so hard to achieve for traditional media what we with traditional 3d what we always try to accomplish right but right yeah I think that's the golden thing about working in vr is that you can just make hand drawn 3d mm -hmm. which is like super awesome uh, yeah um I do. Do we have time to go into another one, or are we? Yeah, we you still have seven minutes. We have five hour. minutes for left. Right? Yeah. All right. Uh, real quick, I'll go into um, that guy riding the polar bear. That one has some oh, pretty, good. Yeah, that has some grouping stuff that's kind of interesting. It's more. This one has sound. We will hear the sound in the recording, by the way, guys. Um, we don't. For oh, you don't reason, hear it still? No, for some reason it's not coming through, but the recording will have it. So. Okay. I guess I didn't solve that problem. So <laughs> this one, it's going to look really complicated with all the sound and stuff. So it's, it is a cycle. And if we go to the bear, that's all the legs, the leg the midsection here and is frame mm. by frame so the legs are frame by frame right yeah uh, and then but the but the group the group the leg group is animated too or not not really it doesn't have, no, it doesn't have any keys. keys so there's no keys on so those the, groups oh, okay the, so this keys part, on the shoulders maybe Shoulder. There's. This is a group that has keys. The shoulder group. Uh huh. Okay. Um, let's see. Bear shoulder. So there. I don't have any actual frames in there. It's all just. And then the neck. I have up down. I label them all like up down rotation, side rotation. So I actually went into specific like right to left, up and down. So basically, the neck and the head is just one, basically one layer with almost no animation, and then the legs are frame by frame animation, right? Yes. But and how did you do the overall movement, the body? The body with the character on top. Is, really. <clears throat> so this is the progressive group, so frame by frame, transform keys. Okay. I did it in in place first, and then I made it progressive. I had to adjust a lot of things. I had to fix it with like so there there wasn't sliding. There may still be some. Oh wow, that's 
so you for to do this you you started with the linear tangents i'm assuming i started then... in place with um so i did the cycle stationary yeah yeah uh, and then... i understand that but i'm, I'm in the, the the top group to move it to move the bear forward i did it frame by frame by pointing oh, really? yeah and then I, it's a oh. cycle, or it's not a. I, then I copied and paid. This is, I think, or no, that didn't work. What did I do? I must have just gone right through. I went right through and animated forward. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> like, so you're telling me each frame you move the little arrow, the the little gimbal, and you move it just a little bit each yeah. frame for yeah. all those frames. Yeah. Holy <laughs> crap. <laughs> Instead of making point A, point B. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was, I was the Respect, son. <laughs> wow, that, that must have taken a while. <laughs> it was just like you go into the zone and you get it done. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see. No, it's, I mean, if you go auto, auto keyframe, I, I guess it will be faster. It's just like, yeah. 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 So Big Making Dave is sure. asking what could would be a good alternative way to do that. It's really dependent on preference, how you want to animate. There's many ways. There's not one way to do things, you know, like yeah. um, like in this case, you know, John was comfortable to do it this way, but you can also do what he said is like to animate a cycle in place first and then move to transform keyframes. But then you have to make sure that the feet are planted. Or you can do it with a rig where you animate frame by frame with a regular rig structure, or you do everything frame by frame, but it's really dependent on what your preference is and what your goal is. Like, for example, is, is the character jumping or is the character, um, is he skipping or is he like always planting his foot and stuff? And then it also dependent on that, which method you should use. If you want, if you want my, my take on it, I would have animated the there's the main group in a linear tangent uh forward after i had the cycle on on, on spot obviously mm -hmm. and then what what i what i would do to avoid this the the slipping i would have once the the bear is moving forward in a linear fashion i would have go frame by frame on the feet and make sure that you know easy you know make sure that they 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 do uh uh, stay on the floor, maybe using a, a different layer. Uh, yeah, you can to, add like uh, markers, right? I can use a, a different a different layer as a marker, as a guide. So I make sure that the feet stay on the ground on those frames that they're stepping on the floor. And then once I tweak each one of the four legs, because it's a cycle, the legs they mm -hmm. they would work. They would work on the, on the next steps forward. Right. So that that's the that's the method I would have used. Um, I wish I could remember exactly what I did, but I'm pretty sure I I did use markers at some point, and but then I think I did just go forward across as I went with it. it was a lot uh, of work, like, but it looks really moving good. The, moving the main group, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes. Can you, yeah, can you play I, it back again? Sure. It looks amazing. I mean, the result yeah, is looks really, good. really, really nice. I got that my window open over there. No, it, it works. Um, Diana is asking another story sure. related, idea related question. How did you come up with the idea of that tree creature? Do you have a story in mind? Oh no, this was actually by my one of my coworkers, uh, Lauren Florence. She, hmm. she yeah she had made this art for a possible Christmas card for the office, and she, oh uh, awesome. She, has, she she want then we all said oh I should animate this thing so I put it together with her, which I think this sketches I don't know not in this one. This one also had this one had like a full model sheet that I made. Mm. Maybe in this other one. Let's see. Hopefully. Oh, David Hernandez has a good idea too. You you could always uh, pick it down and copy and paste the positions for the walk cycle, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there, there you go. Yeah. So, yeah. pull the bear. Yeah. So I did actual like graph paper model sheet for this one. Oh, that's great. That's and, great. And then <laughs> her artwork. That's the artwork she did. 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Looks exactly like it's really very well translated. Thanks. I couldn't get the glow. I couldn't figure out a way to do a good, good or easy glow. Yeah, that's a patient glow. <laughs> but, yeah, I think it will be tricky for this one. Yeah. For sure. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I didn't want to do the outlines or anything either. So I. Yeah, one way in to achieve glow, uh, you would have to make everything super dark and make the tree creature bright, and then the HMD will automatically <laughs> glow. <laughs> so it, it's actually a real glow, right? Yeah. In, yeah. in the screen. So. <laughs> cool. But, I mean, on this, another one with this thing is the shoulder section and the butt section are just not frame by frame at all. It's it's straight up group animation. Mm -hmm. And then the in between, this mid body. I think the neck may have some. Yeah, there's the mid. So that has frame by frame in the cycle. Mm -hmm. Shoulders all group. So I just was trying to eliminate, you know, not using too much memory, I suppose. So I just have like the group. A lot of con this isn't a good example of all the combination of group and frame by frame. That I've been doing. Very, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think as a, as a rule of thumb, anything that has to deform and distort is frame by frame. And if something just moves and translates, uh, rotates only, it's group animation, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Super cool, John. Yeah. Right. Really, really nice. Cool. Thank you. I mean, I hope that you guys got something from. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have any real tricks, like I said. <laughs> I just kind of. Well, you, you saw plenty. Uh, yeah, this was really cool insight on like how you work. Um, this is really fun to see. Um, I think, you know, you use both animation methods very extensively, and it's it's cool to see how you work with those. Um, really cool. Yeah, I want to maybe I'll try some lip sync. Right. Yes, please. I would like to get. <laughs> there hasn't been a ton, right? Nick did some, right, and then. The, yeah, I, I think there's like a modern. I did, I did the dinosaur guy. Yeah, the dinosaur guy. I, I did like the trash guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. trash can oh, talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, I had that little um, guy avatar at the beginning of my um, my working from home piece. Oh, the right. guy that introduces you. But oh, yeah, I that. wanted to do some complex lip syncing with like you know, real facial animation, but a lifetime achievement had a lot, right? And a lot, yeah. And then mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Octopus. Oh yeah, we or... did have a lot. Sorry. You guys there? Yeah. Oh sorry. Yeah. yeah we're here. Okay. Cool. Um, we're at the hour mark, uh John. Um okay. so it's, thank uh, you so five past eleven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you for showing your work. So this was an awesome insight. All right, cool. Really inspirational, man. I really, I'm really inspired to do some animation now. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad. I've never done a stream before, so I was, I was a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Yeah, don't sweat it. I, I always get nervous about the ones I've, I've done. I've done like three now, but still nothing on like Danielle. He's done like 30. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel has done 14. He's <laughs> on, the, on the number one leaderboard. Wow. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, well, cool. this, uh, this group's great, man. I just, everyone just keep making stuff. There's always something new and amazing. I'm always impressed by everybody. It's such cool stuff. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for taking the challenge and and then doing this for for the for the group. Oh, no yeah. problem. Yeah. Now that. you're gonna be on the YouTube channel forever. Yeah. <laughs> forever uh, frozen in name. time. <laughs> we on the rise to everything you created now. Yeah, yeah. we merchandise you now. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, man. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Good day. Thank you. You too.